Good morning, welcome to EMTV. How much effect will your vote have on next year's University Council? And what does the Council do? That is what we're going to talk about today. And of course, we will also talk about the turmoil that is currently going on in the Council. But first, news. The students who shared racist, anti-Semitic and sexist messages in an EUC group chat will not be prosecuted. The public prosecutor believes that the students have already been punished enough. Another consideration is that they have apologized for their actions. The students have been put on probation for one year. It is your moral duty to take a corona self-test before coming to campus. That is what University Chairman Ed Brinksma says in an interview with EM. Brinksma is not in favor of mandatory testing. International students are increasingly unhappy in the Netherlands. Nevertheless, Dutch higher education is as popular as ever with foreign students, according to internalization organization NAFIC. Students still want to come here, but not just for online groups and lectures. And before we start talking about University Council, do students actually know what the Council does? Our reporter Virosa asked them. Do you know what the University Council is? Uh, so far, it's not clear for me. But um, I recently we uh, we received some uh, mails uh, regarding some elections. Yeah, I know it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, but not much. <laughs> yeah. Not much. Uh, what is your opinion about it? Yeah, as far as I know, uh, the concern for the proctor exam is like for the second camera, and um, uh, for some students, it's not very convenient to uh, to put the second camera uh, due to the privacy and some and some some other stuff. But uh, yeah, I think um, what the university council is actually uh, trying to trying to uh, trying to showcase is that um, the students also have the rights uh, during the pandemic. I mean, even uh, even if they have tried to do something, I hope that the university will like hear them more. So I think at least there's somebody representing us as the student body. Yeah. Yeah, you just heard it. The elections are coming up again and not the national elections, but the university council elections and many other universities. That is quite an event here in Rotterdam. Not so much, but maybe this year will be different because 10 students of the current council are considering a lawsuit over the university over the second proctoring camera. And as you heard, that appeals to many students. We will discuss this with EM editor Elmer Smaling, who has been following the council for years, and also with our studio guest, the chairman of the council, Hans van den Berg. Welcome, Hans. Welcome, Elmer. Um, Hans, um, you have been trying to, well, make the council more visible for years. Um, you even started using Instagram. But as you heard, it's not clear for all students. Why do you think this is? I think it's... A difficult question to answer from my perspective, um, but I think that what is the most difficult thing to understand is what the council actually is working on, because it's not very sexy or interesting to follow in detail what we're working on. And that's why we also have a new marketing communication officer who is trying to create a more content visible way of presenting that information and what are we doing in a more direct way that is either more appealing or at least better to understand, because what we do is sometimes quite complex. Okay. Well, for those who have no idea, what does the council do? We do a great different amount of things, but I think the most important thing that we do is talk with the executive board about policies that they would like to implement. Um, and on these kind of policies, we have different rights. The most intrusive one, obviously, is consent, where we have to agree with what they're proposing, but giving advice is also important. But another thing that we can do is take initiative. And in the past year, you've seen that a lot in this council, that a lot of initiatives have taken place. And in a lot of cases, they also make a difference. So taking that initiative is also important. And more specifically, what do we do then? We work on the budget, which obviously is important to the university because it's quite a lot of money. <laughs> 
We're talking millions and millions, um, but also working on student well-being, staff well-being, uh, initiatives about sustainability, about bikes on campus. So it's really small things to the really big things, also like the convergence project that is going on, which is going to determine the next 10 years of the future's university. So are you like the council we see in the municipality? Yeah, you could compare it like that. So there is a few people who are actually working on policies, proposing it. Um, and then you have a council of elected people who are looking at that and saying, well, coming from the community, that is a good idea or that isn't, or we would like to see that adjusted. Yeah. Um, and you say not, it's not all sexy subjects. Well, our colleague uh, Elmer from EMTV, uh, from EM, well, might think different because he has been following the University Council for years now. Um, Elmer, um, can you perhaps um, shortly recap what the University has achieved, what the University Council has achieved over the last year? I do disagree uh, with Hans that uh, there's no uh, nothing sexy about uh, University Council. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't be, have been following it for five years of my life. So uh, it, it has something somewhere probably. Uh, I do think they have achieved some quite uh, good things in the in the past few years. I remember, for example, uh, sustainability is always a very important topic for uh, the council. And when the strategy was uh, constructed uh, two years ago. Uh, the, the students were able to put a, a seventh pillar into the a strategy called sustainability. Uh, and that means that the university in every strategy plan has to take sustainability into account. And that's all thanks to the university council, I really believe. Mm -hmm. um, there are other things uh, as well as the, the whistleblower policy that came out of the whole uh, email investigation uh, scandal at ESHCC, which was uh, very important that it's now implemented as well. Uh, and well, we'll get to proctoring later on, I, I believe, but uh, that's also a thing that the University Council is very much involved in, uh, in ways that people disagree about how to do that, but at least they are paying attention and they're making sure that the executive board really is treading lightly in, in introducing new things in proctoring and maybe even uh, reducing the amount of usage of it. Yeah, and before we, of course, will see what will happen next, we have to talk about the elections. Uh, because um, you heard one of the students say that she got some emails about some elections. At other universities who have the party system, this, the, these elections are quite a big thing. Everyone knows that they are going around. Um, can you tell us why, well, it's not that big a deal here at this university? Well, this university has a long, uh, difficult uh, history with the uh, university council elections. Um, as long as I can remember, students in the council are trying to change the elections from a faculty system to uh, a general system with parties. Um, for years, they have failed to do that. But two years ago, they finally succeeded in some kind of uh, compromised version of it. So now there are uh, no more faculty elections where you just vote for a, a candidate from your faculty and then it will fill one or two of the seats of your faculty in the university council to just general elections that you can vote for any uh, candidate. Uh, but in the compromise, the, the parties were excluded. Um, so it's not allowed to, to have a party and join the elections. And now I believe they kind of have the worst of both worlds. Um, they have to campaign also during Corona now uh, for a whole university that uh, and most of them, they don't know uh, the entire university, they only know their own faculty. Uh, so that's very difficult for them to do. And they don't have the party to help them out, have some institutional memory and all these kinds of advantages. Um, so, yeah, they're now stuck in a, in a position that I don't think anybody is really happy with. Uh, they really want to change it again, uh, but nobody knows, well, everybody knows in which direction, but it's all a different direction. So they're not really uh, getting anywhere. And Hans, you start laughing. Do you recognize this? One more thing, if I can say, uh, is that uh, uh, everybody seems to think that uh, parties are not in the DNA of this university. But until the 1970s, 80s, we did have parties in the University Council. Uh, somehow they were abolished at some point. I'm not really sure why that would be a story for another time. Yeah, Hans. Um, it, it was the history of this university to have perhaps even more lively uh, uh, elections. How do you feel about what Elmer was telling about? Well, the history of the uh, uh, party system at our university council is indeed 
difficult. Um, I think it is even more recent that we did have party system uh, once we started looking really into how can we develop a party system. Um, but the discussion is really difficult because you want to make sure that everybody who stands for election has an equal chance. You don't want to exclude anybody who wants to stand alone. Um, but do they, have the, uh, do they have an equal chance to a party? So you want to have all these fill safes in place. And then there is the discussion about how do we make sure there's no discrimination? How do we know that there is inclusivity? Um, how do we pay everybody equally for their campaigning? These are all kinds of small details, but they are important to make sure that elections do happen constructively. I do have to say that we are currently discussing a new system and we are making really good progress. So hopefully in a very short time, we will be presenting a new system for elections for the students at the council, which will hopefully get the necessary two third majority. Um, and well, election time is always a good time to look back on the past year. What were your highlights? I think during this year, it is hard to pinpoint one specific highlight. There were many, as uh, Elmo already pointed out, we had the whistleblower policy. And I agree, um, I said it's maybe not that sexy, but it is very interesting and it is very important. So we had the whistleblowers policy, students have been working to make sure that the well-being of students is taken into account. More student psychologists, for the staff exactly the same. Is it possible to get more psychologists or more hours to spend there? Um, we're working on staff well-being in work pressure. And then there's, of course, the constant subjects of the budget, the Erasmus perspectives, and we are making important progress on the um, uh, convergence project with Erasmus Medical Center and the TU Delft. So these are all important milestones we achieved this year. But then you also have all these small projects going on. We are looking at making uh, female products available freely at campus. We are looking at can we do something with the bikes that are standing along campus for far too long. These are all important developments that we're working on. So this far the highlights. Elmer, um, is it safe to say that there were also some um, conflicts over the last year in the University Council? Uh, yes, definitely. I don't think the atmosphere was uh, rather good uh, this year. Um, the reason for that is, I think, longer ago, uh, I think it's quite a, a fundamental uh, difference which uh, stems from mostly the, uh, 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 the, the, the um, uh, conflict between uh, employees and students, that they have different interests sometimes. Uh, and this really uh, shows in the, in the election system. Uh, staff doesn't really uh, uh, like a, a party system, um, mainly, I think, because... Well, they're not really interested in doing that. With, and they have a lot of work already to do and they don't want to mess with parties and all, and all these kinds of things. And they also have a different approach. And this is more fundamental, I think, in how to approach, uh, use the power of the university council, which is rather limited. So you have to be careful on how to use it. And a lot of staff members that I speak to say that they want to have like, not, not rather a, a unanimous voice, but they want to have a unanimous voice in the direction of the executive board. And if you have a party system, then you have like different parties that try to uh, differentiate themselves from each other. And then you're not unanimous anymore in the direction of the executive board and you lose the soft power that you do have. Uh, and on the other side, you have the students that think that they have uh, they need a party system because then they will have more votes, hopefully. Uh, and then if they have more votes, they have more mandate and they have more visibility. And uh, then also in that way, they have uh, more power. So that's a very fundamental difference. And I think it shows in a lot of other discussions, uh, for example, the, the proctoring discussion, which was, of course, the most, uh, the hottest topic in, in, in recent year and still ongoing, uh, that, that, that shows the same way. Um, the students now want to, to uh, you know, they're considering legal action against the executive board. Um, the university, uh, the executive board has uh, said that they want to talk to the students before something like that will happen. So they're now having these conversations. Um, as far as I understand, they're not really progressing really quickly. So it'll take some time. But, uh, well, you could say that um, even though there's a lot of discussion whether they can do this legal action, uh, they're at least uh, pushing uh, the executive board to the limit to really think about what they're doing uh, with proctoring. And Hans, um uh, we, we said it a few times, the elections are coming up, um, but you, as a chair, you will stay behind. Um, and perhaps the tense atmosphere that is currently going on will be 
well, gone in one fell swoop. Um, if there's a completely different council next year, would you feel sorry or do you feel sorry? Because quite a few of the current uh, students are leaving. Um, they have to go on with their studies. Um, or are you perhaps more looking forward to new energy and new presence of new members? I wouldn't say either. It's it's um, important that you have a council that has internally a good discussion. And here it is important that we have a very diverse council. Um, you need some new faces. You need some new insights. So it's good that there are some fresh council members coming in. But you also need some council members to stick and stay behind to make sure that that institutional memory keeps going so people know what has been going on before. Um, and yes, there has been a lot more discussion in the previous council than in the years before that. But I think that's a good thing because it shows that there are different opinions and that these need to be heard, that the council is vocal and pushing to make sure that the voice is being heard. And in doing so, in the new elections, new faces coming in, I do hope that we get some fresh faces in, but that we don't forget what we're there to do to share the opinion of the community and to make sure that those voices are heard. So, but there was a tense uh, atmosphere. Um, if those students might come back, that will perhaps continue. It will may cause some interesting discussions, as you said, but also perhaps a tense atmosphere. I'm not sure if it will continue to be a tense atmosphere. Um, what is the most important thing is to have that diverse and uh, to have a very good variety in the council so that all different faculties are represented. This is really important. Um, a tense atmosphere is not per se bad because tensions mean that there is friction and then there can be something coming from that. We see that with the proctoring that uh, yes, there have been tensions between the students and the staff within the council itself. But when we really dig down into the topic, it actually showed that these tensions were on the same opinions. So also the staff didn't want students to have to proctor with a second camera when they didn't have a second camera. Um, they want to have the ability for students to come to campus when they need to do that. They don't want discriminatory uh, actions against these students. So actually on these points, when you have this tension, you start to see where you do agree with each other. So and I don't think tensions is per se bad. Do you think Corona might also cause this? Because there's no uh, room for um, a polite or relaxed chat after your meetings with this online only, or have a small drink at the pavilion or at another place. Uh, do you think this is might also cause a bit more tension? I think that um, in doing things online, you become a little bit more hardline because you want to make sure that your voice is heard. Um, and it is indeed, as you said, difficult to sit down and just have a chat. Uh, once there is a break, to just walk down to the coffee machine and say like, well, you said that, but I actually think this or this, or this is my opinion, and could you consider that? Um, and that is what we're missing now, because everybody's behind their laptop, and once there's a break, everybody takes a well-deserved breather from <laughs> looking at that tiring screen. But I do agree, you see that in politics a lot, that it is actually behind the scenes at the coffee machine, during lunch, during break, that people meet up and actually work out what do we want. Um, and before we close, we of course have to know how can we vote and when will these elections be? Well, the elections start on the 18th of May um, and it's really important to vote. So you have approximately seven days to vote. Um, and cast your vote and uh, not only consider, oh, this is my friend, I'll just vote for him and it'll be done, because it's really important. You're really voting on the topics that are going to determine your future as a student and not only your future, but the future of students decades to come. If we already look at the convergence topic, that is for the next 10 years when we're discussing something. And in doing so, casting your vote, you're basically mandating somebody to vote in favor or against these kind of developments. Deciding whether or not extra millions go to student well-being. Deciding or not whether extra millions go to staff well-being. These are very important votes to cast. So it's important that people read up who the candidates are and really make a conscious decision and motivate each other to vote for the uh, representative that really represents their opinion and their school. Yes. Thank you for coming by and explaining it to us. Thank you. And Elmer, also thank you for coming today, although it is digitally. And if you want to read up about the people you can vote for, go to erasmusmagazine.nl.
Um, and as we heard, staying positive is not always easy as the pandemic continues. This lecture taught students a trick to make your brain happy. And hold it between your teeth and make darn clear that it doesn't touch your lips. And raise your eyebrows. You will create a facial expression which is sending signals to your brain that you are happy. And if you're ever like in a down mood, do this for 30 seconds and watch a video clip of penguins jumping into the water or falling off the ice and you will feel better. Thank you all for watching. EMTV will be skipping one week because of Ascension Day and we will be back on Thursday the 20th, of course at 9am. Do you want to keep up to date with the latest news? Go to erasmusmagazine.nl